Hello everyone and welcome to the project of webinar Basics of Testing for Project Managers. This webinar is intended for projects that are business critical, where IT is heavily involved, cannot afford delays or poor quality. So projects like uh, software implementations, ERP projects, CRM, e-commerce, whatever. And for test managers, uh, or project managers who aren't that uh, knowledgeable about testing yet. We're going to give you some pointers on that. Uh, my name is Jonas Ivonen. I'm a co-founder here at Project Top and one of the developers of the Project Top process. I, my, I daily help companies succeed in their projects, but we're not really here for me. We're here for Jyrki Audio's expertise. Welcome, Jyrki. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yes, thank you for coming. Uh, Jyrki is a guy here in Finland known as a bit of a guru, though I know you hate that word, but <laughs> he's, he's the guy who's often hired for those uh, failing projects to help them out when, when they're behind schedule. Okay, and we seem to have a fire alarm here. Um, <clears throat> it's just practice. Yeah. Sorry about so, that. Yeah, yeah, we're okay, people. Don't worry <laughs> about us. That was just a practice to see if you're awake. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jurgi is the guy who's hired to help uh, projects that are lagging behind. And he's also a bit of a testing guru. I hear you just uh, had your 20th anniversary as a testing manager. Yes, yes. Yeah. Last week it came 20 years when I started my own business. And... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Jyrki has, uh, has agreed to share his expertise with us and why we're here at Project Top is that we have about 15 years of doing the most demanding projects now in, in Finland, across Scandinavia, across the Baltics and also in India and North America, Russia even. Um, some of the most demanding uh, software implementation projects, usually development projects and we at Project Top have spent 10 years developing software tools to make those projects easier. Uh, we're make, uh, the project of software is a dedicated piece of software for, for pro, uh, projects that are uh, heavily involved in testing like software implementations. Well, but enough of that, let's just go to the webinar already. So one thing just regarding questions before we jump right into it is um, you can start Submit any questions you may have at any time, and we promise to answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you open the webinar overlay, pressing the orange arrow button, you can you can see the uh, spot for questions. Just open it and submit any questions you may have. Only we can see them, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, ask anything you like. Okay, moving on. So. Basic basics of testing for project managers, and and this webinar has been divided into three sections. First, we go to go through what um, you should require from your test manager, and then what you can do to enable your te test manager to do well, and what you should observe, uh, take into account uh, about testing when you are doing the project. Yes. Cool. Uh, so, so let's let's just go. So, what you need to um, require of the test manager is reporting. That is, uh, the purpose of testing, of course, is to measure the quality of the project project or the software that you are going to implement, and to see when the solution is sufficiently ready to start deployment. Yeah, there's of course different kind of. Um, description about the testing but but the real answer what we are asking from test manager is that are we ready to go live or not go live and this is the big question and that's why we need reporting yes and to in this graph i can see there's a successful deployment versus the uh, a little less successful uh, deployment that uh, uh, that you should kind of see the sweet spot uh, it, because it's, it, it may always be a compromise between a business and between the project that the, when you're actually ready, you just go and, and then yeah. you get the reporting to support the decision. Our target is that uh, when we go live, then very fastly uh, 
the benefits are, are realized. Yeah. And that's that's the goal. Yeah, definitely. And I like this that how testing is going equals how the project is going. Um, in, in these kind of projects, testing is a really important factor in the success of the project. And and if the testing is in success, the project is in success, um, and also if the testing is lagging behind the project, will run into trouble. Yeah, of course, the, it's pro it's possible that if testing is going well, the project can go uh, badly. But definitely, it's going so that if if testing is going uh, uh, is not progressing and we have problems in testing, then the whole whole project have problems. Yeah, definitely, and that's that's usually the phase during when the problems materialize, the testing phase. But here are some. You, these are the reports that you specified that you should at least. Uh, require these reports from your testing manager, and uh, may I make some guesses of what we're looking at here? <laughs> yeah, and and why why I select these is that uh, these are not uh, reports that are easy to make, or those those that that test manager says, okay, I can do this report because of this date. No, but it, this is so that you should plan when you set up a project. Yeah. That you are plan projects so that you get at least these reports. Yeah. <coughs> so. Okay, let's see. Uh, so the first one is uh, testing progress planned versus actual. So what we have here is the uh, the gray line is the estimation and the uh, dotted line, the green one is the completion pro project. Am yeah. I right? Yes. Yeah. So here you can see whether you're on schedule, on planned schedule, yeah. I might add, uh, or not. And in this case, is this actually from a real project? Can I ask? Yes, it is. And, and as you can see, there, there was uh, the project was ahead, uh, the plan. Yeah. But then it's the, the state is normalized, and then they <laughs> <laughs> normalized. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm guessing that the um, idea here is that you can see instantly if you start to lag behind. Yeah, yeah. And when you make actions, then you can see that uh, are they right actions or not? Yeah. Do they work? And as you said, I'm guessing that this isn't the easiest report maybe to produce, but this pretty clearly indicates how the testing is going. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, the next one is findings by priority. So by findings, you probably mean everything in the project, like like uh, defects or, or change request. Change re yeah. yeah, open issues. Open issues, yeah. yeah. Uh, so not only the defects, but also the uh, change management part of the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we should know how, how many it's happening. It's uh, the uh, difference between change request and defect is that uh, uh, the vendor fix defect without yeah. that you must pay. Yeah. And change request can, can be the same kind of de defect, but you must pay some money. Yeah. So that's why you should... <laughs> <laughs> you should have these different types. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's always so that... Uh, that that's, it's normally so that change request is the defect what you have made in definition yeah. phase. So so basically, change request is the stuff that you didn't put in the definition when you made it. Yes. So it's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. a mistake in definition yeah. oftentimes. But yeah, so you should be at least able to see what critical findings you have open, uh, what nor like normal status or low status you have open. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, then current status of activities. So what we see here is test cases, tasks, defects, change requests by status. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's um, and then there can be open issues and different kind of activities. But uh, um, but you should focus to all activities what happens. Yeah, and and change request can be. 
change uh, to the system, to solution, or it can be changed to uh, business. Yeah. And you should track both. Yeah. Both the effect of the change on the business process and the change request itself. As, yeah. Yeah. And in, so in, in, in this uh, um, report, you can see that uh, the status of all change requests are open. Yeah. And that's quite a bad situation because if you want to uh, successful project, successful deployment on time uh, in budget, then you must have very good change management. Yeah. And, and that change management doesn't mean that you must uh, uh, fix everything and build everything. That means that you must manage change. Yeah. Build right changes. Yeah, you stay on top of things you you make sure that the uh, everything that you need is done and everything you don't need isn't <laughs> yes yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well a stupid generalization but uh, the next report is really interesting i think this this is uh projects problem solving ability i know you like that term a lot yeah and something that a project manager might wonder what is actually going on here I'm going to try and make an educated guess. What we have here is the open issues and defects uh, on the, the red dotted line is how many open issues or defects we have at any given time. Yes. And the gray line is an estimation of how many we should have. Yes. So when testing starts, here at the beginning, you're going to be opening a lot of issues at the beginning, but then you should be closing them. And you can see that the um, um, the green line is is the open new open defects, and the uh, golden line is it or brown line is the defects that are being closed. Yes. Every time when you are uh, create new. New issue, then red line is going up, and when you solve, it's going down. Yeah, that's a nice, a nice summary. <laughs> I tried to explain it really hard, but uh, what what we can see here is that uh, uh, there should be less errors. That that you can see that at the end, the red line is plateauing. You aren't actually closing the errors. Yeah. Uh, you just uh, uh, as many new new issues. Are are being opened as, as closed. Yes, yes. And this is this is in this situation, that status now it's quite good. But if you don't take care of your solving ability, yeah. then it's very fast to go up. And and imagine the situation that you have about 100 open issues. Yeah. That you have you have 100 need uh, change needed to do. Yeah. And then uh, the quality of testing going down, it's crashing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it's uh, you test something and then there is a 100 change and then it's... Yeah, the tests really mean nothing at that point. You need to retest everything. And yeah, yeah. And that's why if you want to uh, keep your schedule, you must uh, work so that uh, you create uh, a new... Uh, you create new findings and then they are fixing and, and this fixing factor is working yeah efficiently. yeah it's a really good point and something something uh, that project managers should keep in mind yeah and this uh, uh, you should ask this manager to do this kind of report yeah yeah. Yeah, cool. Really, something that um, maybe a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't uh, think about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, another thing to require, you pointed out, uh, is resource and action plan from the test manager. Yes. So, resource reservations three months in advance and action plan and calendar calls at least one month in advance. Do you think that uh, test managers are, aren't always doing this? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. If um, the first, um, if you 
if the test manager doesn't have resource plan mm -hmm. and an action plan, yeah. uh, then he doesn't have a good reporting yeah. because that kind of reports what what we don't you you can't make those without resource plan and action plan. Yeah, that's that's so. And and um, if you are using business expertise that they are doing testing. Yeah. Then uh, you must make the calendar res uh, the resources reservation. Ask the boss that okay, I need the these guys yeah. and make sure that they are not on holidays and, and that kind of thing. Three months advance and, and then um, you make the action plan and if you are, uh, if you are try to make calendar course for next week then uh, the, the most of the people have different meetings. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it crashes the, the whole testing period. And so, please uh, be on time. And then it's it's so sad that that you are teasing your people, asking that okay, you must come to tomorrow. Yeah. And that's okay. That surprise. I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. And this kind of thing should happen any anymore. Yeah. It it isn't cool if you think about the people working in your project. Yeah, and one comment is that uh, in, in many many cases they say that the project is successful if the company doesn't uh, crash. <laughs> and then they say is that the project is successful because they go on on time, <laughs> but the business crashed, but that's not the point. <laughs> but, but if I go on, the real uh, successful project is that uh, we can do this project work during our own, own work time, that we don't have to do our work and that kind of thing. Yeah. And you have, you know that, okay, this is the four hour time with the project and, and then next Thursday I come back. Yeah. That is, that's the real successful project. Yeah, that, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually when I'm involved, it, it, the people are, Towards the end of the project, working their evenings and, and weekends and everything, mm. spending all their time on the project. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting interesting slide. I mean, tip how to calculate testing resources. Um, so this is um, something that project managers can use to kind of estimate uh, how much testing, how much time testing will take, am I right? Yes, yes it is. So we have testing single functions, which would mean like one easy test case, like normal test case, yeah. and end-to-end -end test cases, I mean testing longer process chains has its own uh, hour value, and observations found would be that how many, however many uh, observations you make in that project defects or otherwise, they have their own hour value. Yeah. And this is how you how you kind of calculate on what kind of uh, resources you will need. Yes. Yes. And of course, that amount of observation is quite difficult to count. But uh, yeah. if you have problems with that, then please take a contact and we help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, Definitely. Yeah, yeah, because we have done it so long time, we can calculate yeah. that the approximately. Yeah, yeah, and, and that said, it's if you say that it's one hour per one test case and 2.5 hours per one uh, longer test case, a process test case, uh, that's just something, a ground that you can kind of start evaluating. Yes. For easier test cases, it's a little maybe less, and for longer test cases, it can be a little bit more, depending yeah. on what kind of you yeah. use. But it, it's good to have some kind of baseline. And I think a really interesting point that you make, make here is that an effective testing day is actually 5.5 hours of testing. Yeah. And that's this, like eight hours. Yeah, this is like the finish amount, but, but it's so that, um, uh, when you come work, then you have some chat, you maybe have some kickoff that, okay, now we are starting, and then yeah. you have some some defect management meetings, and, and then somebody is calling, calling the tester, 
that okay my kids is sick and and when you are make the, the resource budget mm. then then you don't should not don't use eight hours or seven hours it's 5.5 if it's quite realistic yeah 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 some guidelines for uh, reserving resources yeah and to kind of summarize here uh, the first part, what, what to require from the test manager would be uh, the resource plan, the action plan, and from that you can get the real-time reporting that, to enable project management. Yes. Because how will you manage the project without uh, knowing what is happening, right? Yes, yes. And as you, as you can see in the picture, if you have in left side uh, you, you can easily see is that okay now my, my project is start lagging behind yeah and and when you have real time reporting you can see it okay now we must do some actions and then in right there's the problem solving ability report that says that okay uh, we are not fixing errors uh, as fast as we sh should and yeah. that's why we have problem and now I know that I know I have a problem and now what is the reason and then I can make actions. Yeah, really good points and something that uh, that may be a test manager who aren't like, I mean project manager who aren't that uh, involved in testing uh, wouldn't even think about. Yeah. I mean, guys, give, give us comments, give, give, give us questions. What, what do you think or anything you want to ask, just uh, write, write down. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, next subject is is how to enable your test manager, and we're going to st start with this interesting slide here. Enable, don't destroy testing. I like this headline. <laughs> that uh, and I know you like to say that 90% of the prerequisites of successful access acceptance testing are either built or destroyed before acceptance testing begins. Yes. Um, if your system is not ready and and the definitions are the quality the quality of the definitions are bad and and you don't have tools then it's the testing doesn't prepare anything yeah testing just tell you that what is the quality yeah yeah, that's something that people often say and, and can't really remind you enough that testing will only tell you what the quality is. The mistakes are usually made in the beginning of the project. Yeah. And, and mistakes that are made in the beginning of the project, they have a tendency to snowball towards the end. So uh, mistake, a definition mistake can be really costly if it, if it uh, is only discovered during deployment. But I guess everybody kind of knows this already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the idea here is is that you have this uh, kind of traditional project progress plan from from definition to to deployment. But you should plan the project, taking testing into account uh, from the contract phase also. Hmm. That uh, maybe if, if we were to say something that involved the test manager and think about the project from from uh, end to beginning yes when think about the thing that you would start testing what are you going to test mm -hmm. you need to know that and to know what you're going to test uh, it should be the definitions and if you make the definitions smartly then it's really easy to make the test cases and and have some good quality testing right y yes yes and and if you are if you are if you have a situation that that you have problems with acceptance test, mm. just make a small analyze. And and I'm quite sure that at least at least eight of these are um, eight of these problems are made before during the project. Yeah. Yeah, that you have a definition phase, but it's not finished when you start to do the building and, and system test and that. Yeah. These are so normal uh, problems, what you are doing. And I ask that, uh, please uh, create new problems, don't do these things. <laughs> yeah, 
So every shortcut you take in the beginning of the project adds more like technical debt to your project. Yes. There's no getting rid of it. You could sweep problems under the rug, but you're going to find them uh, when you hit acceptance testing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't hide from, the, from, it, from anything anymore at this point. Yeah. And the idea of why to, you should require um, reporting and why you should uh, take testing account is that you make the right corrections during the project that you are not hiding the wall. So Yeah. <laughs> yes, you should try to hide the wall you're about to hit. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so and the idea is is that to to enable testing, to enable your test manager to do well, you need to optimize the whole process. Don't try to cut corners during the definition phase. Do the work then, uh, taking this testing into account, or you will get problems during testing. And uh, I think this is something that Jyrki likes to say, that if you spend one hour more making a good definition, you will save five hours during acceptance testing. Yes, yes. That's example. If, if you go to our project of VIP area and read our definition document, there is a model how to create definition so that you can generate uh, the test documents the test cases from definition, yeah. just not writing, generate. Yeah. And that's uh, uh, the big thing. You save at least that five hours per, per one spend hour. Yeah. yeah. And when Jyrki says go read our VIP area, we, I just want to tell you that uh, if you go to projectup.com, there's a VIP area and you can read. We have all this this project the process for development projects we have documented it you can read it there for free at your leisure if you want to take a look yes go ahead um, okay and the last part of the webinar the observe part how you should um, see how the project is progressing and, and react to things and what we have here is also one of your your I, I love know you love the phrase quality gate <laughs> and what we have here is is a project from planning to build packages and where we are progressing and there you have a gate before the uh, uh, cutover or the acceptance testing ready to start user acceptance testing equals ready to go to the deployment phase yes and that's uh... If you have a big project and then you have user acceptance test, that part should be so that, that the system is ready and you have high fives and <laughs> wow, this is, this is a great system, that is all what we need. And the user acceptance test is just verification that, yeah. okay, this is great. And then you just make decision to go live. Yeah. And it's, it should not be a big mess, it should be... Yeah. Success. So you're saying that the user acceptance testing is it where we start testing the? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, it it really is, and according to to the project the process, the user acceptance testing is something where you 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 should start it with cutover practice. You you should plan uh, acceptance testing like you were going live. Yeah. And that's a really good way to verify that. Uh, um, actual cutover will work and, and you're ready. To yeah, apply. and that's that's one thing that uh, spending few hours uh, with cutover practice you save a lot of our hours in user acceptance test. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think this is a really important slide, the next one. Things preventing acceptance testing. Yeah. Because I know at this point in the project you should Go start acceptance testing, but you have some problems. Your build is not complete. The functional testing may not be complete. Deployment hasn't been planned. Um, you have open issues, more serious or, or less serious. But this at this point, you're starting to feel pressure to go live. And this is kind of a test for a project manager <laughs> to uh, uh, whether you're ready or not. 
uh, what, what are your thoughts? If, if any, of, any of these is true, should you start acceptance testing? Uh, um, of course, you, there is a different situation and, and if, if it's one, one thing it's not okay, then maybe. Yeah. But, but uh, in normal, normal situation, it's that you have several things open. Yeah. And if you go to the next slide, this is open plus that if the build is not ready, yeah. then it's it's normally so that the, it's it's not not so that easy part is left, it's yeah. the tough part is left. Yeah, I think uh, that's a really good point. If you if you think about that, you have twenty percent remaining. Uh -huh. It can really be like fifty percent of the work because first every easy thing is done. All the simple processes uh, are done first. And the features that your business really needs, what you guys want while you're implementing this new software, uh -huh. they are the things that are left last. Yeah. And that's why I'm no more many times says that that what you can see when you make decisions, it's top of iceberg. Yeah. This behind it comes here. Yeah. yeah, that's a good analogy. Uh -huh. So remember these guys. And so, <laughs> what if you start acceptance testing without readiness, uh, we run into trouble. Yeah. Testing is, is not progressing because too many errors are found. If there are too many open errors, testing will not pr uh, progress because uh, testing uh, the defects will add up and your guys can test because uh, test whole processes because there are other other defects also open and, and when these are fixed then you need to retest and the processes may change and you can't of course train people if if the software isn't working and your implementation won't be on schedule yeah and that's um there comes three things um if you go live with after this kind of uh acceptance test first you have solution what is not working probably then you have people who are not able to use the system. Yeah. They are not trained and they can't use it. And then uh, you have a lot of uh, cut over uh, errors yeah. because you, you didn't have time to plan cut over the deployment and then, then you have troubles. Okay, my master data is wrongly. I have wrong addresses here and that kind of things. Yeah. So it's uh, it's the sum summary is quite big. Yeah. And so, when are we ready to go live? Actually, uh, I guess it is um, uh, some kind of balancing the negative effects of the deployment versus how much it costs to keep the project going. Yeah. Oh, we left that positive uh, <laughs> thing away, but but this is just like. Uh, telling about the tough situation that uh, if you have asked proper uh, reporting from test manager, yeah. then you have real data to make the decision that uh, should we go live or should we postpone and then you know that how much your project is, what is the cost of your project per day and if I take uh, one month more time, how much that goes. And then in one, one time your readiness level is enough, so you, you will start to get benefits. Yeah. So then you should go live even if you have some issues. Yeah, it's definitely okay to go live if you have some issues, but uh, yeah. uh, your test manager should be able to tell you yeah. what those issues are and how, will they, how they will impact your your business. Yeah, I, I said, that, and this situation when you go live, that should not be a surprise. Yeah. That in, if if you have very expensive project, and then uh, you know the quality, then you make we can make the definition. That, okay, we go live, and it's we are going down a little bit, but we are yeah. hiring one people and, and that kind of thing. So it, I said that you need reporting that you know, not quest. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Base your decisions on data. Yes. Yes. It's really good summary. Okay. Um, if I were to were to kind of try and uh, sum this up, 
here, it would be for you, if you as a project manager, if you think about the testing aspect in your project, maybe these are the things, if you don't remember anything else from this project, uh, maybe you'll remember these, these points. I mean, involve the test manager from the beginning of the project. It's not fair for the test manager if you kind of start the project and, and then at some point you just remember, oh, we need to test this thing. And then you just take someone and you do that. Yeah. And okay, we plan that you have two weeks here. Please test the system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This this sounds like a joke, but it really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and from the beginning, with the test manager, plan the plan the project with testing in mind, including how you do the definitions, including the project processes, how to handle handle the uh, change management and everything inside the project. Yeah, and, and if you don't have enough knowledge please take a contact we help you help you so uh, it's it's much more easier to have two hour chat with us and and go the situation through than start a big project uh what is to surprise every day yeah every day that isn't a surprise is a surprise <laughs> yeah yes that's the, yeah um, and demand real real time reporting. I mean, it's it's 2000 and something. We have the technology. We can have real time reporting to base those those decisions on real data. Yeah. And if the quality is bad, have the co courage to make tough decisions. I mean, if the solution isn't ready, you should have the data to back it up and say that this just simply isn't ready. Yeah. And there's you have. Uh, if you have real-time reporting, then you can react, and it's much more easy to make the right decision. Yeah. But if you don't have, you are just testing, mm. then you have the, the tough situations that, okay, okay, this goes one million more. <laughs> <laughs> and for the love of God, don't use spreadsheets and, and emails to communicate the, for the project communication and testing. It, it just really isn't isn't the right thing to do anymore. And for us here at Project Top, what we could do for you, if you have these kind of projects, ERP projects or, or CRM, big implementations uh, and stuff like that, but what we at Project Top could do we could provide you uh, with our professional expertise and also with the project of software that is dedicated for these kind of projects we have all everything needed to, to um, define and test and make sure that the and report of course and make sure that the project is a success if, if you have even the shadow of a doubt that everything in your project isn't being handled at the moment just you can just contact us. We're chill guys here. Uh, we know our stuff and we could just have a little chat and see if we can help. You can find our um, our contact information from the web page or, or you can just write in the chat or the question bar in your webinar overlay that, hey, give us a call and we will. Yes. Okay. And now you guys have a minute still to um, ask any questions you may have give us comments or feedback about the webinar we would love all your feedback all your questions and if you want us to contact you just uh, tell us so you have now a minute um, i'm gonna see if we start getting any any questions here give me a second you guys have been quiet today <laughs> Was it was it our next webinar uh, before in, during the summer or, or August? Uh, we have one more webinar before for the summer vacations here. Okay, okay, yeah. and then August, yeah. Yeah. And let's. Uh, 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 ask us to send you emails emails about our webinars because we have webinars every three weeks. Yeah, we. We have this kind of webinars every three weeks. If you if you'd like to receive um, an email, just notification about the next webinars, just uh, you can just uh, write that at the end of this webinar. We don't seem to have many questions right now, so so we're going to end the web end the webinar. And you can uh, there's a line where you can write us feedback. Just uh, tell us if you'd like like us to send you the other webinar recordings. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for the questions for today. Thanks everybody.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you at the next webinar. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.